Hello everyone, this is Rick, and welcome to Astral Club. This is Visit to Planet Terra Nova. Before we get into it, just want to mention Patreon. If you'd like to help support this channel and the work that we do here in spreading astral projection and the knowledge thereof, you can do so by joining Patreon. When you join, you get advanced episodes on Sunday, a library of downloaded episodes for your podcast app, a Patreon email, and a chat room uh, where we can talk back and forth. And there's also a private uh, message board there too for Patreon members. And I like to answer questions, what have you. And if you're interested, just go to the description section. Next up, private lessons. If you'd like a lesson to learn how to astral project, be more than glad to work with you. All you have to do is go on down to the description section and hit that email and request further information. Okay. For those of you who've been around for a while, you might remember that back uh, in July of 2021, I was in Astral Guide School and one of the interesting missions they sent us on, and I know we had some secret help, but what we had to do is get life started on an alien planet somewhere. And um, they didn't quite tell us, or at least tell me how to get it done, but uh, it was our job nonetheless. Next thing I knew, I was on my way to this particular very primitive world. It didn't look at all like I had hoped it would look. It didn't look like Earth. The atmosphere was orange with rolling clouds and continuous lightning. The, the ocean was a pinkish purple. Uh, so, you know, I did a quick examination at the time when I first arrived. I didn't see any particular biological life, which didn't surprise me given the early state of this planet's evolution. If uh, what I'll probably do is I'm going to post the original episode on Wednesday, on Wednesday rather, which which for anyone listening to this, that would be the past Wednesday for the given week. So uh, you'll probably see it listed as a visit to an alien planet. So if you want if you want the whole story, just go back to the Wednesday episode and you can listen to it. I don't want to have to repeat the whole thing here. The bottom line was is I managed to, using lightning and a chemical reaction to get things started from a biological standpoint. We're talking just single cells, nothing fancy. Well, with that preview, we had a lot of thunderstorms where I live um, the other night. Matter of fact, it thundered all night. And I actually spent most of the night just awake staring at, I love watching thunderstorms. And I hadn't, I hadn't been involved in a thunderstorm that lasted that long in a long time. It must have been one heck of a storm. So at some point I decided just to go off to sleep and slip out of my body. Uh, because when you're out of your body and you're flying through the sky, well, my goodness. So I took off in the sky and was flying around my town, just, oh my God, absorbing the electric energy that was just, the air was alive with this electricity. It, uh, it, it kind of makes you feel like you've had 10 cups of coffee, but not sickly, but just really, really charged up. It's, uh, it's a very, very good feeling. The only problem is, is when you return to your body, you're not going to sleep for the rest of the night. It's not going to happen because you're just so charged up. Uh, while, I was, while I was enjoying the lightning, it reminded me, though, of something. It reminded me of this trip that I had three years ago on this planet, this uh, orange planet with pink-purple oceans and lightning. And so I thought, hey, let's while we're doing this, let's go pay a visit and see what's going on. So with that, I concentrated on returning to that, uh, that particular ident and I blacked out as per usual. And I arrived hovering above the planet. Now the planet had a sizable moon. I don't know if it was this, if it's as big as, as our moon, but they had one, which I think is always a good idea based on earth's history. Uh, the sun wasn't remarkable. It, it looked to me to be not that different from our sun, 
which I guess is a good thing. But as I looked down on the planet, it looked very much like it did before. And uh, I knew there, it wouldn't be worth going down there because there's not going to be any life worth looking at yet. Uh, life needs time to evolve. So I decided to do something that I rarely do because it, it's very taxing on your energy and it requires a lot of concentration, a lot of willpower, exclusive willpower. The kind of willpower you have when you say, I'm going to accomplish this task or die in the attempt. That kind of willpower. It's also, it plays with your psychology, and I'll, I'll mention that in a second. So I decided to go one billion years into the future. I figured if there's life that's going to, or multicellular life that's going to be interesting at all, a billion years might be enough to make that happen. Who knows? I concentrated on a billion years in the future and I pushed on and um, I remember my will being fixed. I remember vaguely just dislocation and forgetting who I was. And then I blacked out and when I came to, I was still hovering over the planet, but now it was very different than what it had been in the past. In fact, there were now white fluffy clouds and a blue ocean beneath me, which obviously I found encouraging. It reminded me of Earth. But then the whole billion years thing kind of got to me. That's the thing about time travel. You really have to have your mind together. You've got to have your psychology together. Because I started thinking, wow, it's a billion years in the future. Earth's dead now because it's projected to be dead a billion years from now with no life left. Um, so I didn't want to dwell on that because the last thing I wanted to do was get depressed. Uh, but it did give me an idea. I decided to name this place because I don't think I named it last time. I, I named it Terra Nova, New Earth. I know that's not the most original, but, you know, I figured if my home planet is dead, well, then I'm going to name this New Earth, Terra Nova. I descended down to the new planet, and I could feel, which often happens in very extended time trips, that I now had a body that was uh, visible, that was operable, uh, I still had all of my usual astral abilities, though. I could still travel and, and fly. But now I had a body which could actually be seen if there was anything down there that could see, that is. And it could be felt. And I would also be able to feel other things. Now, it's not the same kind of feeling that you get when you use your physical hands. On one hand... <laughs> on one hand... The sensation is dull, but on the other hand, here I go again, you get all this extra sensory information about if there's any kind of thoughts going on in the creature, if it's that advanced, you can sense that, you can sense uh, its, its makeup, uh, any kind of emotional state, uh, you can sense a lot of different things that you can't with your typical physical hand. So... The astral hand in this situation makes up for the loss of your typical physical tactile senses. So with all that in mind, I decided to dive into the ocean. Where I dived, it was fairly shallow. I think it was probably no more than uh, uh, maybe 50 feet deep which might be somewhere around 15 meters, let's say. So it's a fairly shallow sea. The sun was up and shining down into the waters. I started looking around and I saw a lot of black type sand started swimming through the water at a rapid pace. And all you have to do is will yourself. You don't have to do the whole 
breaststroke or whatever. Uh, and I, I traveled for a bit when I came upon some, uh, it looked like groups of hair that was growing out of the seabed. And I said, oh, great. That's multicellular life right there. That's okay. We're making a little bit of progress here on Terra Nova. And on these long hairs, which were, geez, they're probably about a yard long, a little less than a meter. And there was these little, looked like little, little black barbs. I mean, the grass, well, the grass, the hair, call it whatever you like, was black. And there was these little black balls all over the, uh, the, the hair, the hair plant. <laughs> I don't know, maybe should I call it the hair plant? Maybe the hair club for men. I don't know. Anyway, it was like a hairy plant and these little barbs. So I went, I swam over and I decided to touch it to see what it felt like. When all of a sudden, all the little bumps, barbs, whatever it was, they were like little crabs and they came skitter scattering into the water off of the plant, which, which frightened me for a quick second because I, I wasn't expecting that type of thing to happen, obviously. And, and you know, I, I, I'm not a huge fan of the crab slash arachnid body plan. That's old trauma. Um, they didn't attack me or anything. They just went skitter scattering every which way. So uh, I then proceeded to feel the plant and it, it, felt, it felt like a coarse piece of hair. Uh, didn't get any other sensations really from it. I mean, it, it was a simple plant. Uh, I would have, now that I thought about it, I should have caught one of the little, well, I just call them crabs, these teeny little crabs. I should have caught one of them before they went skitter scattering everywhere. But uh, they kind of gotten away. And uh, I figured, well, let's just leave them alone. I don't need to, to molest those poor things. So I continued to, to travel through the water. When I came upon what looked like a huge piece of chewed bubblegum lying on the seafloor. It was pink and it had um, little hair-like protrusions coming off of it. And I wondered what the heck that was. And I thought about calling it the, the chewed bubblegum plant. Uh, so I went over and I said, I wonder what that's going to feel like. You know, here I am on a new planet just touching things. What could possibly go wrong, right? So I went ahead and uh, this thing was about, um, well, I don't know, what did I say? It, it, it probably was about a couple yards, say a couple meters long and about half that much wide. And it looked, like I said, like hairy bubblegum. That was, that's the best hairy chewed bubblegum that, that was on somebody's pavement or what have you. That's what it looked like. So I swam down to the thing and put my hand in the middle of it just to feel, you know, if it was sticky or something. I don't know. The next thing I knew, I must have triggered something. I don't know if it's a plant or if it's an animal, but it immediately started wrapping itself around my hand, around my arm, around my shoulders, my head, and then eventually wrapped itself all around my body. Now, I obviously wasn't in danger. This, this body of mine seems physical, but this thing's not going to hurt it. But I'd be lying if I didn't say I felt a little claustrophobic, but more than that, I felt foolish. I'm saying to myself, here I am from thousands of light years away on a planet that I helped kickstart a billion years in the future, wrapped up in chewed bubblegum. I'm so glad nobody can see me now. <laughs> uh, my first impulse was to try to tear my way out of there. But I figured, wait a minute, in a certain sense, these creatures are kind of my children, if you think about it. So I decided I didn't want to hurt it. I tried at first just gently peeling it off from the, from the inside, 
But the more I tried, the more it kept on sticking. So I was like, okay, that's not going to work. Uh, then I decided, well, maybe if I started willing myself through the water faster and faster, it just might fall off, you know, and, and not be hurt. So I started willing myself going faster and faster and faster through the water. And I could feel that it was loosening and loosening. And so I went faster and faster. And eventually I could feel it just peeling off my face, peeling off my shoulders. And, and then, and uh, finally I was free of it. I looked back and it, it was just settling down to the sea floor, kind of rearranging itself a little bit, but I didn't see any tears or any damage. So I felt good that I'd been able to extricate myself from the, uh, from the bubble gum, the chewed bubble gum creature without harming it. So I thought to myself, well, uh, so far I've uh, had one heck of an impact on the biosphere of this planet. I wonder if there's any other life forms that I could screw with. <laughs> uh, this was not my intention, but apparently it was causing some problems. I decided to leave the ocean at that point and started flying through the air, uh, eventually till I got back to some volcanic looking land. I could see that there was some of the hair-like plants that had started growing on that space between where the sea and the ground met. And you could tell that, that the moon was causing tides, so there was some overlap there. So I thought that maybe what I was seeing there was the uh, early stages of plants coming to colonize uh, land. But this is still obviously very early stages because, you know, the tide would come in and out and it was still, I'm sure, very much needing the ocean for you know, water, life, who knows, food, probably all those things. I, uh, I decided that this was enough for one trip uh, and I decided, let's go back to Mother Earth and leave uh, planet Terra Nova behind for now. Perhaps we'll return and progress further and see you know, what happens to this planet. And uh, who knows, maybe one day some intelligent life might evolve. Uh, who knows? I willed myself back to our current time. And when I arrived, I found myself back inside my physical body. I still felt a tingling everywhere, and I could have sworn that I still felt sticky <laughs> all over my body. Uh, I think it was it was imagined, but it, I could still feel that you know the bubblegum creature uh, still adhering itself to me. Uh, I guess what it, I guess I guess the way it probably survived was maybe eating those spider creatures and just kind of you know grabbing onto them and then probably absorbing them as nutrition or who knows. Well, that was my trip to a billion years in the future to a planet which I'm calling Terra Nova, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If it was interesting to you. Why don't you go ahead and hit the like button, share it with those of like minds, subscribe if you haven't already, uh, be more than glad to answer your questions and comments. Would you like me to go back and progress further into the future and see if there's any more interesting that, that I can mess with? <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, and let me know. And don't forget, if you didn't see this past Wednesday episode, you can go ahead and watch that. It'll give you my original visit to this particular world. At any rate, this is Rick, and I will see you on the astral plane.